hi and welcome back to the channel. And as we're about to see on screen, the thumbnail isn't clickbait for once. So this side of the van, which I haven't done yet, looks like £250 worth. And as we rotate around the front to the right hand side of the vehicle, we can see the massive difference a good bit of cleaning and polishing can do. So this week's going to be quite action packed. We've got engine bay cleaning, lots of hoovering and wet vacuuming, etc. and stuff like that. We've got about 400 years worth of dust to remove from the back of the van. And we're even going to have to get involved in painting a bit of the uh, bodywork on the outside of it. So this week the used car conveyor belt has brought us a 2005 X Royal Mail Vauxhall combo van. The paintwork's pretty faded all over, apart from the uh, passenger side door and rear quarter that would appear to have been painted at some point in its life, and we'll see a little bit of evidence of that later on in the video. So in this video we're going to be doing absolutely everything, so the rear of the van, all the front of it with the seats etc and the outside. Now I'm going to make an educated guess that this van would have been defleeted at about 10 years old. So it's been in private um, ownership or with a company for example like a Tyler or something or plasterer I would guess from the amount of dust and stuff in the back of it. And then it's been part exchanged again into the motor trade and that's where it's been picked up by my client and then given to me for a good clean. And it definitely needs one because as we can see on camera this thing is absolutely disgusting. So the engine bay is a good place to start in this van. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to cover up this little box on the right hand side. That's the main ECU for the engine bay and that controls all the ignition etc and stuff like that. So I'm going to use this uh, microfiber. I'm just going to wrap it over there. These plugs are weatherproofed but due to the age of the vehicle you know there might be a little bit of a concern of them getting a bit too wet. So that's just going to disperse any of the water that's sort of splashed in that area a bit. With that covered up, we can look at starting to wash this engine bay. So I've used Koshkemi Green Star All Purpose Cleaner and use that probably quite strong, about five to one. Sprayed it all over the engine bay and then I'm just gonna agitate this with a various selection of little brushes. You'll notice on camera that the front wings look already quite darker and more red if that were, if you can get my gist. That's actually a good sign because they've got wet. When they look wet with water, it sort of uh, restores the color. Um, something like that's a good indication that when we machine polish the vehicle later on, we can restore the colour quite well. Interestingly, some of the more modern cars, uh, whereas this is single stage paint, they have a base coat which would be red, but then they lacquer over the top of it. And what can happen is if the red paint fades underneath the lacquer, there's no way of restoring it. This happened quite um, badly on, I think it was a colour called Milano Red on Hondas and some of the Civic Type R's and Honda Jazzes back in the day would sometimes need a complete repaint if that paint faded onto the lacquer because there was nothing you could do to restore it. So with the engine bay all washed off, we can now put dressing on. So I'm using Koshkemi Motor Plus here. It uh, can be applied wet or dry. It's just quite easy to spray on while the engine's still damp. It's also good for dressing the wheel arch liners as well. If they're plastic, it leaves a really nice satin finish at the end, which we'll see in the video in the final reveal. So once the engine bay's done, we'll move on to the door shuts and areas like this petrol flap. Again, it's just a case of applying the all-purpose cleaner, getting a brush in there, agitating it out to move all the filth around, and then giving it a good jet wash out.
So with the engine bay washed, the shuts, and also the petrol flap and the wheel arches, I can now look to finally do the body. I've already given this a bit of all-purpose clean and a rinse down. I'm just gonna go over with a snow foam now and then just give it a good sponge over. I'm not too worried about here um, using the two bucket wash method, etc. You're only gonna do that if you're worried about maintaining a car with good paintwork and you're worried about marring the paint. The paint on this vehicle is so flat anyway and we're gonna grind so much of it, it's not gonna make any difference whatsoever if I just use the one bucket wash method. So, with the vehicle now inside the workshop, I can look to remove the seats. As we know, this is not something that I do every single episode, uh, for the simple reason is it's time more than anything else. My clients would much prefer I spend an extra hour and a half cleaning the outside of the car and machine polishing it, removing scratches, touching wheels in, etc., than taking a lot of effort and time to pull out some couple of seats or the rear seats just to get a small bit of debris out from underneath them. I use a high pressure airline and I'm in all honesty would believe you would get 90% of the debris and junk from underneath the seat or around the sides of it with air pressure without having to remove it. The main reason, if we're all honest, why most of these channels take the seats out, A, the vehicles can actually be that bad they warrant it, like this one, but in all honesty it just makes them so much easier to film because if you've got a seat in the way and you're trying to get a camera and a lighting rig in there, it's very hard. If you remove all that out of it, it makes life a lot easier to film it. So a lot of people ask me in the comments, do I buy and sell these vehicles? And the answer is no, I don't. I've worked as a, a car valet or a detailer uh, for the used car trade for around about 20 years. So these vehicles will come to me from uh, little independent garages. They may have been part exchanged at main dealers, uh, bought from big auction houses or online auctions. And so my job is just to literally clean them up and get them ready for resale, or in some cases, get them cleaned up ready for auction. So with all the vacuum cleaning done, we can now look to wash the plastics inside the van. What I'm gonna be doing here is uh, using Koshkemi at about 10 to one. That's the Green Star again, their all-purpose cleaner. Agitating with some small little brushes. Um, I tend to put the all-purpose cleaner in one of these IK pump sprayers. I hold about a liter of pre-mixed solution, so it makes your life easier, because the little trigger sprays tend to run out pretty quickly on these sort of disgusting disaster cars. And I'll just have a nice clean bucket of warm water. Um, once I've scrubbed an area, I'll use a damp microfiber to just clean that sort of filth off. And then I'll periodically sort of rinse them out inside the, the water in the bucket to keep them clean and fresh. 
So as mentioned before, uh, I've also got an airline in here as well. I've got a compressor with about a 200 litre capacity. It's quite important because you're going to get through the air pretty quickly. Um, I think mine's an 18 CFM, so that's cubic feet per minute it can charge at. So it takes it about five and a half, six minutes to charge the cylinder from empty. Um, and it's running about 150 psi, which is about 10 bar, but you can adjust that down obviously. On something like this, which is super dusty and disgusting, an airline's absolutely fantastic around these air vents and real tight little sort of uh, gaps between the plastic mouldings. It's just gonna get in there and drive all the filth and disgustingness out, and it's gonna dry the plastics at the same time as well. So if an area needs sort of a second pass or a bit more scrubbing, you can see pretty much straight away where you need to work. So halfway through cleaning this van, my clients turned up and as mentioned about these plastic sort of covers in the rear of the van, they would have been fitted new by the post office and they've just become really tatty and quite worn and detached. And he just said to me, look, just pull them out of the van completely and just clean what's underneath. And we're about to see something quite interesting because of this. First of all, the level of dust in the back is <laughs> substantial. And secondly, you can see these funny little spots and the black lines above them. Now. We already knew this vehicle had had paintwork on this rear quarter and door. And what that is, is at some point that panel must have had quite a big dent in it and they would have spot welded on the outside what would be classed as a puller. And they put some sort of little tags on there and then this thing grips onto it and you get what we call a slide hammer and you give it almighty yank basically and it pulls the panel back into shape. Or near enough, you know, so that you can then work it with some bodywork and filler, etc and then paint it, make it look nice. So what's quite amusing is obviously they've done this from the outside, but they didn't remove the plastic paneling and uh, clean it up a bit on the inside. So when I'm sort of scrubbing this, that will remove some of that burn marks and then little spot welds underneath. I'll just put a little bit of touch up paint over the top of those afterwards, just to tidy it up a bit.
So something like this rear load cover out the back of the van, it's just gonna be so much easier to drag it straight onto the wash area, drown it in all purpose cleaner, and then give it a good scrub with this um, drill brush attachment. Loosen up as much of the debris and dirt and filth as we can, and then give it a good old blast with the jet wash and just remove it all. And after that, we're gonna to look to do the seats in the van. Now this is actually where it gets quite interesting, a bit like the paint that we saw earlier. You can do a bit of detective work sometimes and work things out as you're cleaning these older cars. So first off, the seats in this van aren't original ones. I could tell that when I was removing them for a number of reasons. First of all, somebody's been at them before and removed the bolts and disconnected the wiring harness. You could just tell by how it'd been done. And secondly, both the seats had the sliders to move the seats back and forwards. And not all of them, but majority of these postal vans, the passenger seat was fixed in one position. Also, the headrest doesn't match the rest of the seat, so these are definitely being replaced. The reason why this happens on quite a regular basis is these, the driver side of these vans get worn very heavily on the side bolster near the door because these little postal vans may go 100 yards, the driver gets out, the postal worker sticks the envelopes and things for people's letterbox, drives it another 100 yards. So they're stopped and start, started a lot and people get in and out of them a lot as well. So usually by 40,000 miles, these driver's seats are absolutely obliterated and falling apart. So if this vehicle was originally part exchanged at seven or eight years old into the used car network, it's not unexpected for somebody to put secondhand interior into the vehicle. So the first two buckets of water from the cab and also from the back of the van and the last one was what I extracted from the seats and the carpet. So that's a pretty decent level of filth removed from it as we're about to see as we dump it all out onto the wash bay. And for something a little bit different this week, I'm trying Kosh Kemi's own interior dressing and pretty good stuff. So very affordable is the most important thing. All I've done here is spray it all over quite liberally. I'm using a little uh, microfiber mitt just to rub it in. And then I use another separate microfiber uh, cloth just to remove any residue off the surface. It gives quite a nice satin finish and it's not too slippery afterwards either with some of these silicon ones can be very, very greasy. I'm a big fan and advocate of Aerospace 303, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different and see how it compared, especially price-wise because the uh, Koshkami product was considerably cheaper. And now for the mammoth task of trying to restore the paintwork. So what we're going to be doing here is I've used a Koshkami H9 heavy cut compound and a Chemical Guys heavy cutting pad and then I've gone over afterwards with Rupes Uno Protect. This is a really good finishing compound. It's going to get rid of any light marring and it's also a sealant so it's an all-in-one product. So you can go over it, leave it, buff it off afterwards and you don't have to apply a wax or a sealant or anything like that because it's done it all for you. The only problem with the machine polishing these single stage paintworks is that you are quite literally grinding off a very thin layer of dead paint to re uh, reveal what's underneath. And that's gonna bung up the machine polishing heads pretty quickly with dead paint and compound as we can see it's changed it from yellow to red. Now some people who are doing these kind of jobs will just try and clean out the same uh, compounding pad over and over again. I find on these single stage paints, it's just a lot easier to have sort of 10 fresh pads to one side and as they become too bunged up and contaminated, just pull them off, put a fresh one on and carry on. And at the end of the job, just to wash them off, which we'll see very shortly on the wash bay.
And now for your fun entertainment, you get to guess which one's the green one, which one's the white one, before they get all washed off. So for my next little trick, my client has provided me with these delightful wheel trims to fit to this van. And, you know, you could just bolt them on top of the steel wheel, which I can show you, but it doesn't look particularly good with the rusty silver wheel behind it. However, if you give the wheel a bit of a sand, put some primer on it, and then paint it black and fit the wheel trim on top of it, it looks considerably better. Another area of this van that could do with a little bit of attention is this sill. So it's obviously been painted at some point in its life and it's faded. And luckily for myself, it has sort of a textured finish already. So it's covered in underseal, I suppose. The best way I could describe it, it's a bit of a mottled finish. So what I've done here is given this surface a bit of a key up with some scotch Bright pads beforehand. I've then gone over with some panel wipe. That's a solvent degreaser. That's gonna remove any oils or silicons and things. Then I'm going to use an aerosol that the client provided, just to go over it and just dust a nice coat of paint on top of it. It's a process that you've got to do over a series uh, of passes. If you just try and spray it in one hit, you're just going to get loads of runs and it's going to look awful. It's one of those things where you spray a little bit on, let that dry, and then just repeat the process over and over again until you feel you've got enough coverage on the panel. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't going to be a perfect colour match, but it's going to be considerably better than what was there to start with. So as we approach the end, I'm going to use a little bit of plastic trim dressing. The uh, product I'm using here is uh, by a company called Concept Chemicals and the product is called Vista, I believe. It's a long life uh, plastic dressing. It's very good as we can see on camera, but you do need to leave it to dry for a period of time. It's not something you can just apply and stick it outside. Um, if it rains, it can affect it um, or if it gets frost to it, it can affect it. So you need to make sure it's got a good two or three hours to cure before you put it out to the elements. So we're now going to do the glass, uh, always do the tops as well, otherwise you're left with a streaky tide mark, which nobody likes to see. So all things considered, it's had a plaster or something driving it for the last five or six years, and the fact of the state it was in, uh, the before and after is pretty good. Uh, it's turned out very well for what it is. One thing I always do when cleaning these older vehicles, if I find any mechanical issues or things that I think need attention, I'll always pass that information on to the customer. So for example, if you haven't seen it, the previous video I do was of a 211,000 mile Seat Altea. And for example, I noticed when the vehicle was on full lock um, and you drove it, it was having a clicking audible noise and that was a good indication that one of the CV joints was a bit worn and on its way out. So these sort of things I always report to a customer. And this van's no different. So the little spot welds I found in the back of the van, um, the fact the seats have been changed or anything else I might have found on the vehicle, all that information is passed on to the customer they can act accordingly. So if you like this kind of content, please think about subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button. You'll be pleased to hear I've uh, got a number of vehicles like this coming in very, very shortly. Um, cars, vans, commercials, that sort of thing. So there's gonna be variety at least. And some of it will be a little bit more educational about what products I'm using, how I'm using them, and how some of the workshop facilities work as well.
so the back of the van's a monumental improvement than what we started with. Unfortunately, I couldn't get all of the sort of ground in cement off the plastic area. I think you'd have to replace that bit of trim or recolor it. And likewise, the air vents are a little bit damaged on that right hand side. But again, we do have to be realistic. This is a older used van, which has done a few miles um, and it's priced accordingly. So, you know, I'm going to say something which probably is an unpopular opinion. Most vehicles in this price bracket wouldn't have had this kind of level of care and attention when they've been cleaned. Most of them look disgusting, full of old crisp packets and pasty packets and Coke cans and things. So pretty much like this car looked like to start with, to be honest. Um, so it's, it's going to be one of the better ones out there cosmetically to buy. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.